the whole club needs a reboot. Yeah, Andrew Johns with the final say there. I think it was laughable uh, that Craig Bellamy could possibly be uh, linked to a move to South Sydney, as we've heard, though. Wayne Bennett and Sam Burgess very much uh, in their sights. That, of course, if they part ways with Jason Dimitri, who was there at the club today, Danny? Jason was there. and Actually, um, he was there from early to late doing his usual job. I just got off the phone to him a short time ago and he said that he's um, hearing all these media reports and being told things by everybody, but he's talked to Blake Solly, the boss of the club, and had several conversations and he hasn't heard anything along the lines of that he's going to be removed as coach very soon. And look, all the, all the talk is and the scuttlebutt, whatever you want to call it, is that he will have... He has to win this week and the players have to show something that they really want to play for Jason. So I guess the challenge is now uh, there for the players to do something. There's been talk of replacements. Uh, uh, Sam Burgess' name has been very strongly mentioned. Sam wants to see out his, co his contract with Warrington from everything I'm, I'm hearing. And Warrington want to try and extend Sam Burgess' time in England because he's doing a fantastic job over there. Uh, then there's names like Wayne Bennett as well. Uh, look, ultimately, I think we're going to see... If they don't win against Cronulla, uh, I think it's very hard for Jason Demetrio to still be the coach. Gus... Sitting back, watching what's unfolded uh, since that loss to the Warriors on Saturday afternoon, what have you made all, about all this discussion surrounding the coach and the playing squad? Yeah, look, I, it's not just the coach's problem. There is obviously other issues. I think halfway through last year, they were up near the top of the ladder mm -hmm. and we highlighted that there were some things I didn't like about their football and the way it was trending. And since that time, it's just been pretty much watching a bus crash in slow motion. Uh, it's been pretty poor. I doubt that one game is going to decide a coach's future because then what happens the next weekend? You know, that, that's a silly statement to be making that uh, if he doesn't beat Cronulla, he'll be on the outer. And what are they going to do in the meantime anyway? How's that going to fix the situation? It's not. The owner's responsibility is on the players who, to me, just don't look as though they're fit enough, energetic enough, disciplined enough, and they're not putting enough work into the effort areas of the game, which is finding them out against the better quality teams. Now, they've had, some stiff, they've had a stiff draw at the start of the year. They've won one game against the Bulldogs. Uh, but on the weekend, that was poor. Coming off the win to perform the way they did, to be picked apart so easily by the Warriors, really highlighted just how out of sorts their football is at the moment and how out of sorts their football team is. They looked very divided. They looked very... Uh, unconnected, if I can use that word, um, in the important areas of the game. And it, it's come back to bite them. Uh, Jason Dimitri spoke post-match, Gal, about his frustration towards, I guess, those moments that Luttrell has. And we saw it again on the weekend. He's accepted a three-match ban for the elbow to the head of Sean Johnson mm. at and a time when the club needs it like a hole in the head. Oh, exactly. I've got to be honest, I think he's quite lucky uh, to only get three weeks for that. I mean, we saw Dom Young sent from the field for what was great, a careless high tackle. For me, that's intentional. Um, so lucky to get three weeks, but he's accepted the, the three weeks and, uh, you know, we'll move on. Hopefully come back, uh, you know, better. But if Victor Radley did that, what do you think oh, would happen? Gus, I, I, I agree with you. Look, I, I like Luttrell. I think he's a great player, but he hasn't played that well this year, as we know, but... That, that's an intentional act. That, yeah. That's intentional. For I'm me, surprised for me, there wasn't almost, some action about the lifting well, for, tackle. For me, it's almost a send-off. The, li the lifting tackle, I, I agree. I, I thought he was going to get some sort of action. There. I mean, he, he put his hand in between the leg. I think what saved him is it didn't end up in a bad position. He put him down pretty easily. But uh, that, that was a straight after an error, too. Um, he's lifted, he put his hands right up between the leg, which we know he can't do. And he obviously didn't land that badly. But that's certainly what saved him. For me, Latrell, he looks like he's playing angry. He looks like he's playing with a real... Just up yours attitude. I'm not sure who he's angry at or angry with, but his actions on the field aren't reflecting a, a bloke who A, has the talent he has, and B, who's playing like with, with his teammates. And G Gus used a word there, which everyone's using these days, connected and connection. And teams like to have a good connection amongst each other and all get on well together and all play for each other. And South aren't doing that, that at the moment. And when, you, when your biggest name, your leader, isn't a part of that, it sort of filters through the rest of the team. Everyone else is seeing it. And, that's, and Latrell is just, for me... He looks angry at the world and he's, he's, he's playing like that. He's not playing well. Do you, do you honestly think, I don't know if anyone's ever asked him, has anyone ever sat Latrell down and said, do you really want to play this game? Are you really in love with this game? Do you love the hard work? Do you love the discipline? Do you love your teammates? Do you love your club? Do you love the game? Or is it just, I'll do it because I'm good at it, but I'll do it my own way? I mean, if someone actually sat him down and said, if you had a chance to walk away, would you go? 
You reckon I, he would? I don't know. I'll I reckon he would. He does. You reckon? I reckon he would. Reckon he'd leave the game. Just, just this week alone. I reckon alone. he will. I don't, I, I, don't see, I don't see that he's in love with it at all. Well, I'll tell you what. He, he, he loves his people and he loves doing things for the community. That, that's one thing he does. I think he gets gets off a bit on that. Like, on, during this week, he jumped on on his day off, jumped on a plane, went up to... Was it Maury or something yeah, like I, that? I was with him, yeah. To, to, help, to help with it with the police and things like that. And, and I got told from, from the police themselves, he done an absolutely fantastic job. So I think he, he likes giving back to the community, he likes doing those sort of things. I don't know if anyone's asking that. I, I can't imagine he doesn't like the game. Um, but, but as I said, at the moment, he just looks angry at the world and he's playing that way. Gus, is it just the, the tackles and the foul play that make you think he no, doesn't want to play the game? You know, we've been saying this for a few years with him. You know, he plays at his own pace. He plays in his own style and his own way. He picks and chooses his times. He's kind of... Um, and he doesn't put a lot of work into the effort areas of the game. And it doesn't feel... It feels as though there's him and there's the rest of his team. Right? And they'll, they'll all say the right thing and, and blend in and, you know, stick up for him and all that sort of thing. The game sticks up and everyone sticks up for him. But Latrell doesn't respond. Gus, privately, he doesn't respond to that. Privately, some of the people who spend a lot of time defending him at Souths are not defending him as strongly. So I think maybe they're feeling like they're reaching a point where something's got to give uh, and they need a change in his attitude or performance. And the problem is, like, he's a high, he's an elite talent. He's incredible, a, an incredible talent. He can change games. He can influence results. No risk about mm. that. But how long since he's been doing that, mm. really? He has little moments in games where things fall his way and he'll do it. But he doesn't go looking for work. He doesn't go looking for big moments. And it would seem at times where he's not where he should be at different times as well that lets his team down as well. There's a responsibility element there too as a leader in the team, Denny. I mean, these could be quite literally... Coach Kelly moments well, that we saw from him on the weekend. I mean, now now the coach, in his time, and he personally is the, as, as the boss of the club, is without his star talent for three games. James, I'm not I'm not in the position to bag a footballer because I didn't play the game, but I just can observe from afar on his behaviour. And like Gus was saying, some of it isn't where his teammates want it to be, and uh, that's been raised internally as well. And I don't know who can change that for him. I mean, it's got to come from him, but I don't know who's going to extract that from him. I don't know who's going to help him get over that, whatever coach? it is. I, I, look, honestly, if he, if he woke up tomorrow and decided I'm not going to play rugby league tomorrow and went away to his farm and did all that, I would not be surprised. Would anyone be surprised if he left the game tomorrow? No. Look, no. I'd, be, I'd be disappointed. Probably not. But I, I think, I'll be disappointed too because uh, talent-wise, there's nothing Absolutely. He, he can change games. But I know. wouldn't be surprised. No, I agree. I wouldn't be surprised. But I think there's a lot of senior players there that probably need to take some responsibility. He seemed to lump it all on the trill, which, look, he's a big, he's a big voice. We know that. And he wants to be that big voice. So... You, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago when he went off about the thing he went off about. Like, if you want to be that player, you're going to cop some criticism at times, and he's got to be able to accept that. But there's a lot of senior players at that club as well that need to stand up and, and help and help him, I suppose. Mm. Doesn't help uh, when you're searching for for answers. You chuck your half back back to New South Wales Cup, and he breaks his leg on the weekend too, Gus. Oh, Locky that's terrible. Yeah, absolutely. What terrible. a horror month for him. Yeah, but, but you know, like, and that was searching for answers too. I mean, dropping your half back after three rounds, you're searching for answers. It wasn't the solution for, for the team, and it wasn't the solution for them. But um, you know, he's gone back and tried hard in reserve grade. Unfortunately, he got a bad one on the weekend. That incident has been referred straight to the judiciary, attacking the legs of a kicker that's uh, in the motion of kicking, which they're very dark on these days. And that's that's poor for Lachlan. And you know, he'll get over that. Bones heal. He'll come back. Gus, before we wrap this up, Craig Bellamy to the Rabbitohs, million to one. Wayne Bennett to the Rabbitohs? Zillion to one. <laughs> Sam Burgess to the Rabbitohs? Maybe in time, but I don't think he's going to jump back in there too quickly. Well, Gus, do, do you think if they don't sack him soon, they're delaying the inevitable? Do you think they're better off just getting rid of him, cutting ties and starting again now? Well, I've just, I've just named three coaches that won't be going there. I, mean, I, I don't know what you're going to... It's not the coach's issue. This is a club issue. This is a club issue. It's not just the coach's issue. The coach needs support. Um, it's not just a coaching issue. You're not going to solve it by sacking the coach and putting in an interim for the rest of the year. You're not. Simple as that. 